Oh, I don't know about y'all, but I need a fucking drink. Oh, please don't spill. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Drinking with Dory. Hit me, Dory. Ooh, what am I drinking on? It is a beer Manhattan. Wait, it's got the bitters, it's got the sweet vermouth, it's even got a little orange peel, and you stir it right up. But I made this using beer distillate. What the fuck is beer distillate? <laughs> beer distillate is basically a kind of liquor distilled from beer. It comes out tasting almost like a brandy or a whiskey, which is why it's a good substitute in a Manhattan. This I got at a farmer's market in Park Slope, uh, naturally, because where else do you find beer distillate? I have no fucking idea. Who else did I find at a farmer's market in Park Slope? My guess. <laughs> they wish. They are a drag and burlesque performer who you can see performing all over New York City. It's Lady Bedbug. Come on in. Oh, hey, Dory. Oh, hi. How are we on this evening? Mm, thirsty. Yeah. He is a stand up comic and the co host of the Ups podcast. It's Julio Gallerati. Come on in, Julio. Hey. Hi. How are Hold we? On. How you doing? Um, and last but certainly not least, she is an actress who you have seen in Letter Kenny and Station Eleven and so much more. It's Clark Bacco. Come on in. Hi, baby. Truly three of the sexiest people to ever bless the drinking screen. Hence why I am wearing a moo moo with my titty swinging. They're going to be doing all the sexiness for me. Julio, since you're the one who's turning the reddest, let's start with you. Uh, what are you drinking on, my friend? Bringing tequila, Casamigos, Blanco. Uh, the, the ice is like melting and it's starting to look like it's a lot. But I, I assure you, I do not have a problem and I look forward to sipping it slowly. What do you have to say to people who blame tequila for their bad behavior? I can attribute bad behavior to vodka. I find that I'm more likely to become angry about something that's not worth being angry about if I am drinking vodka, whereas tequila, that doesn't happen. I can't really speak for them and I, I don't not believe them. You Okay, so you don't not believe them. That's so kind of you. <laughs> hey, Thady, what you drinking on? I'm drinking on a blood orange mezcal seltzer with my lipstick all over the rim. Is a blood orange a grapefruit? For a very long time, I couldn't drink grapefruit because I was taking an anxiety med because, you know, we're all fucked up. And I couldn't drink grapefruit or eat grapefruit. So I would always like want the grapefruit, even if I didn't like it that much. And so now I'm like grapefruit, everything, blood orange, everything. Is it the same fruit? I don't know, but it makes it more appealing to me. Well, I mean, I guess you can tell us if your anxiety spikes at any point throughout this <laughs> recording. I'm so, no. great. I'm doing great. <laughs> we believe you. Just yes. That's going to be the tagline for this episode. Ah, <laughs> uh, Clark. Clark, Clark, Clark. Oh. What are you drinking on? I'm drinking this uh, Castle Rock Rosé of Pinot Noir Rosé, actually. What, how do they do it? The influences, they're like this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why the hand has to go behind it, but it does for some reason. So this is what I'm drinking. When it comes to rosé, have you ever sipped rosé all day? Or what has been your longest rosé session? No, I can't drink that much rosé. This is what was in my fridge. It was actually gifted to me because I forgot to go get something. I'd be drinking tequila or mezcal, honestly, same family because it's so sweet. So the longest you've ever drank in rosé probably is going to be Good like luck. this. Yeah. <laughs> Julio, you do a character on the Instagrams that I love so much. Do you, do you know which one I'm talking about? The, the, uh, the big lip plastic surgery person? Hello face. Yes. I tell him, my boyfriend, I just want attention. But look at him. He don't give me no attention. Some boyfriend I have. <laughs> um, so what is Pillow Face's preferred sipper of choice? Uh, Pillow Face would probably drink some martini. It's funny, I can't do the character unless I'm seeing myself as right. the character. 
But like, what, is it like a dirty, dirty martini? What kind of martini yeah. is it? No, yeah, it's probably just like a regular one, like going out with my with my bitches for drinking, and I'm gonna having the martini. Clark. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, you play Rosie on Letterkenny. It is brilliant. That show, like mine, is heavily driven by drinking. So, uh, what is the drinking culture like off camera among the cast and crew? It depends on the season and what's going on in the world. Back in the day, when it was like early seasons, that shit was crazy. There's this place, we shoot in Sudbury, Ontario. It sounds rural as fuck. Is yeah, <laughs> one thousand percent. And there is a club called SRO, like standing room only, yeah. bottle service, and everyone would be doing like drugs, alcohol, everything. It was like it's a fucking party. Like Letterkenny people are a party, but like not not as much. Anymore. Who do you think is still like your go-to party person out of the cast and crew? I think Evan, who plays Rold, is like my easiest go-to for everything. And then Tyler, who plays Stuart, and then the Hockey Boys. The Hockey Boys are always down, always down for a party. That, I guess, tracks pretty fucking heavily then. <laughs> it really does. It's like the raver kids and the hockey kids. Yeah, exactly. Thady, are you still the current reigning Mix Brooklyn? I am still the current reigning Mix Brooklyn because we had this little gap where um, the competition didn't happen for several years. I have been carrying this title now since 2019, hey. which is very, very convenient. That's amazing. <laughs> well, you know, obviously I want to know you have such incredible live performances, but have you ever involved liquids in your performances? My friend used to call me the carrot top of drag and burlesque because I was very prop heavy. Um, I have learned to like just synthesize a little bit and use less, but I do have one number where I dress up as a mad scientist and I recite the first 80 elements of the periodic table. And then at the end, there is a, uh, a phallus explosion um, with, of a giant beaker with, um, with dry ice and it explodes dry ice and water and it's like green and it's, it's, it's a very epic um, ejaculatory ending. A Julio. Garalati. On the Oops podcast, is it Oops or is it Oops? Oops. It's Oops? Oops, yeah. Can I call it Oops? Sure. <laughs> I'm all for you taking liberties with that. Well, on the Oops podcast, you and Francis have talked about so many booze-filled evenings, etc. But you have talked about specifically going on a booze cruise for a friend's birthday, and yes. it got a little wild and crazy. Before the night was over, Raina was pulling her tits out for everybody. She then Raina's was... friends started pulling her tits out. What? Everyone was just pulling their tits out. I didn't yeah, you see missed that. this because this <laughs> was that the best booze cruise you have been on to date, or was there an even better boating boozing bonanza? The, it was the only booze cruise I've been on. I personally am not a booze cruise fan in general. I don't like being trapped in a vehicle while drinking. So if you, if you're saying someone were to gift you a booze cruise bonanza for like uh, a bachelor party or something of the sort, would you be like, no? I mean, I'm not, I don't see myself having a bachelor party to be honest. Um, Why? What a conscious, what a hot take. It feels like <gasps> inconvenient to be honest. Like to who? To, to me and to everybody else. Like <laughs> I don't feel like doing it. Like theoretically it's supposed to be for me, right? Like I don't feel like doing that. I'm about to have one my one myself, a bachelorex party. We're doing my partner and I are doing a joint one. I didn't know y'all were engaged. Is that like exclusive for for the show? We've actually been engaged since 2020, so it's not exclusive. We're we're finally getting married in July. But yeah, so I hear you, but I'm I'm gonna try to make it our own because Excellent. when you're gay, you kind of have to make weddings your own anyway. So yes, you are engaged to your Arch. partner. <laughs> raw or darling. Y'all are so freaking adorable. It's honestly like kind of frustrating. Do you feel confident that if pressed, no matter the mood, you would be able to order for them at a bar? 100%. Oh yeah. Because here's the thing. We only want to drink 
drinks that are smoky and spicy, both of us. So it's like mezcal with some cayenne pepper, whatever it is, it's gonna be on the menu. That's gonna be the go-to. Clark, mm. my friend. Which by the way, I saw that re-pour. You poured like right in front of the camera. Oh yeah, because here's the thing. I know. <laughs> As it happened, I was like, I'm a terrible actor. I have no sense of camera. No, 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 no. I love it. I love it. But, be, but because you you pro, you really like showcase that label so much, I must ask you to do an impromptu ad for this rosé you're, you're sipping on right now. I must. I must. It's hard to promo something you're not passionate about. Wow. Some actor you are knowing me for you. I'm really good at saying no. I don't do things I don't want to do. I don't work on sets I don't want to work on. And I don't want to work on this set that promos is one I don't like. So I guess my question for you is what is it, what is it like to not be desperate? <laughs> <laughs> That's hard work. I've been putting in that work for a long time. You have an, and it shows, uh, it shows in the movie you just did, I want you back on <laughs> Amazon. Um, you filmed in Atlanta. So obviously, I gotta know, what what strip clubs did you hit up while you were filming down there? Before I say the most horrible thing ever, you have to understand, and my agent can verify this, I always told her that my dream was to go film something in Atlanta, specifically to be able to use my per diem in a strip club. But it was last March which was a specific time in our lives. And I was not allowed to go out and have fun in Atlanta. So no, I did not go to any strip clubs in Atlanta. Shed a tear for you. Claremont Lounge, we'll have you back. Another pour time. one out, pour one out Thank for you Clark. I heard there's a strip club in Atlanta that's for like elderly women. Like yes, elderly and they crash, they crush the titties with the cans. I want She's to still see there, that. apparently. I want to go to all of them. I weep, I weep for the the stripping industry. I guess the last couple of years must have been tough, and we don't really think about it that much, huh? My partner ran a virtual strip club uh, at a time when we were not able to go in person, <laughs> and yeah, it was it was wild because we were at my aunt's house, and they would just be in the attic with no door, no privacy, just running this virtual strip club. Just my 80 year old aunt just like ignoring willfully. Julia, when is the last time you've been throwing dollars? I went to uh, 11 in Miami for a wedding. Uh, well, during like a wedding weekend in 2019. But see, Julia, this is the kind of bachelor party you can have. You and your partner could go together and make shit happen. What's stopping? The two of you, whatever you want. I, I get that we're sort of having our own take on bachelor parties here. So that could be fun to do like a joint bachelor and bachelor party because that would actually be nice. Just like hanging out with our friends. This is good uh, brainstorming. We're here for you. This is constructive. This is not just a talk show. This is life changing, life affirming. Collaborative. Collaborative. <laughs> to that point, let's wrap this shit up. Hey, Sadie, <laughs> what are we cheersing to slash vlogging? I am teaching a drag class. Uh, at the Brooklyn Arts Exchange for adults. Send your, send your anyone who wants to um, become a genderful freak like me over my way. Julio, my friend, what are we cheersing to the Um Yeah, check out my podcast, I guess, Oops the Podcast, and um, same, my Instagram's not Julio, and that's about it. Where you can find Pillow Face in all its glory. <laughs> Clark, what are we cheersing to Flash Frogging? I guess you can go watch I Want You Back on Amazon Prime. It's a great rom-com. But more importantly, I just booked the biggest role of my whole entire career, and I'm very excited about it. Congrats. Is this exclusive for the show? Yeah. <laughs> it's actually not out in the world yet, so. I'm covering Rita's ears. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll just have to stay tuned yeah, to see you know, what that is. It'll be a good one, though. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so okay oh uh, what am i choosing to um this a1 us da prime varsity level talent like these three who agreed <laughs> to do this dumbass show how do i do it 
how how do I get these people in my life? By by plague by begging and pleading and debasing myself. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow the Instagram at Drinking with Dory. More importantly than anything else, she's on Cash App, y'all. This bitch is on Cash App. Give me money! Look at all the work that I do. Research. Buying new booze for you to check out. Look at that dog. See that dog? That dog wants you to give me money. Clark, as someone who is no longer desperate, would would you tell these fine folks to give me money? Give her some fucking money so that she can stop asking for it. <laughs> this has been Drinking with Dory. And I'm Dory. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> That was not planned. <laughs> not sure what happened. It went on my nose. Oh, shit. <laughs>